All right, so we're going to look at the review for chapter four. This is going to be for the entire chapter. Everything kind of works together. Uh, you know, so as you notice here, this first question is technically from section 4.4. It doesn't necessarily start out of 4.1. So let's just cover some of the important points for chapter four in Foundations of Math 30. So the first question is, why does a set of n objects containing some identical objects have fewer permutations? Uh, let me, I'll share my screen here for those that are at home. Hey, how's that? Is that better? Uh, why are there fewer permutations when we have repeating objects? Well, you can read through this here, but the bottom line is if you take a look at uh, this graphic down here below, if you have two identical red um, objects here, okay, uh, red one and red two, if you flip those around, you still have RRB. The red one and red two in different positions, if they're identical, do not mean that there's a different permutation. So when you have repeated objects, there's always fewer because you can trade around all those identical ones and you don't have a, anything different. So how do we know how to find the number of permutations? Well, if you remember, the however many um, repeating objects, so in this case right here, we have two red identical objects. So you take your number of permutations and you divide by two factorial, okay? If we had three identical something else's, we would also divide by three factorial. If we had five things that were identical, we would take all the permutations of n items and divide also by five factorial, okay? So divide by the number of objects that are identical for each identical uh, set, okay? So in this case, you take three factorial and you divide by two factorial because two of them are equal. All right, uh, so that's point number one, that's repeated objects and that's section 4.4 uh, looks like. Now, if you wanted to do some review questions that are just about this, and this is the nice thing about the textbook reviews, is that it kind of tells you what lesson or what section to go to to look at other examples or that sort of thing. Maybe if you want to watch a video on the instruction, you know it's 4.4. Uh, and also the next page, uh, if you flip the next page in your textbook, if you want to do questions 10 and 11, those are questions that involve uh, permutations of repeated objects. So these study aids are really good from the textbook as well. All right, question number two, why are there fewer combinations of a set of n objects than permutations? Well, you should remember, bottom line down here, if we have three different distinguishable objects and order matters, ABC is different than ACB and so on. But in combinations, the order does not matter. So we need to remember that. And we only have one combination of any three distinguishable objects, okay? So once again, if this was Abby, Betty, and Charles, and they were lining up at the door, and the order at which they lined up mattered, well, then we would have six different ways that they could arrange themselves. But if Abby, Betty, and Charles just had to leave the room to go help the next teacher lift some chairs or something, doesn't matter the order, it's just those three, there's only one combination, one group of uh, students, let's say, okay? So you will notice that there's a permutation uh, notation, right? Three pick two. Pick is the word that I use there. So if you see P, that means pick arrangements. You pick them and you place them in order. And C is combinations. I use the word choose. So we're just choosing random students or choosing random objects. The order doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so the formulas for those, I'm not sure if those will show up anywhere here. Not really. Let's, let's actually, before we move on, let's just go back and look at the formulas for C and P. So if we go back to the notes here, let me just zip back. When we first tackled the difference between combinations and permutations, okay, so it was this lesson here. There's a bunch of examples from previous videos. And where is it? Oh, here we go. So if we just zoom in right here, NPR, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and n c r with choosing we have the exact same formula except we've added this okay we've added a dividing by r factorial again so that reduces the number of permutations okay any questions this is good you guys got this straight okay two more questions here i think two more questions 
So decide, or how do you decide what strategy to use? Okay, in accounting problems. So this was 4.6 and 4.7 primarily. And the very first thing that we just talked about even today, uh, earlier on in the, in the day, was determining if order matters. If order matters, we're talking about permutations. If order doesn't matter, <coughs> then we're talking about combinations, okay? So order mattering, that's important. Um, what else? Um, look for conditions. That's the next thing you would do. So let me just, maybe, can I just highlight this or not? Not really. Okay, so order, you look for order, you look for conditions. So in some of the examples that we've used, you know, you have a car lot and the brand new cars have to be on either end, let's say. And then all of the other cars, the used cars can be in the middle. You deal with those conditions first, right? Fundamental counting principle usually is how you start with that. Make the lines. How many decisions do you have to make? Well, all the cars have to be parked. And then how many choices do you have for each decision? That's a good way to start if you're unsure. Repetition, okay, um, make sure you divide by A factorial, B factorial, C factorial, however many repeating objects you have. If a problem involves multiple tasks that are connected by the word and, we know that the FCP, fundamental counting principle, can be applied and you would usually multiply those, right? And is multiply, okay? If the problem is an or, then the fundamental accounting principle may not apply and you may have to add. And this is particularly true with cases. And again, I've, we just talked about this in our 4.7 lesson, but if there's cases, you're adding the results from each case. If it's like, uh, you know, um, um, another question where it's like, uh, well, we use that example with the computer chips, right? Uh, in, in the cells, the memory cells combinations for each cell but then you multiply the numbers because all of the, that information has, has to go in there it's one kind of solid situation and so you have to multiply uh, those ones okay so maybe go back and refresh your memory there from these examples and uh, questions 17 to 19 on the next page uh, starting here oh I guess maybe that's the last one yeah so if you would like um, I'm not making this mandatory for you guys but if you would like the chapter review is really good, and there are a couple pages of chapter review uh, for chapter four. Uh, anybody have any questions about what we've talked about here just in the review? No, you guys good? <laughs>